What fun, so do I. <laughs> I find them very educational. What do you say? Oh, let's play a game. I just got home from the theater because I was going to do one right outside when I got out of the theater, but it was raining, so I couldn't really do my out of the theater reaction, so I had to do it right now. I got a five five minute timer on the screen, so it shouldn't be too long. We'll see how it goes, so wish me luck. I'm gonna hit the timer here and go. Okay, so this is the sixth installment of the Scream franchise. That's crazy to think, part six of Scream. That's wild, right, that we're here. Uh, the opening is awesome. Um, the, you know, follows the tradition of all the other ones in the past, how we always get a really cool opening. This one was different and it caught me off guard, which I thought was really unique. And I really appreciated that. So that was very cool. And Samara Weaving's in the house. She was at um, Radio Silence is Ready or Not. Radio Silence obviously being the directors of part five and six. And we also got a cool Easter egg with her bride costume from Ready or Not. And the subway scene. Not really a spoiler because I think you see it in the trailer. So not really a spoiler. So so then we got the core four as, as they call themselves in the movie. We get out of Woodsboro. They're going to college. Tara wants to live her normal life now with the Chad and Mindy, the twins, um, and, and um, Sam comes along, you know, to, of course, protect her. But, you know, even though you're in New York now with a different backdrop, Ghostface takes Manhattan, is obviously the running joke, but we get um, Ghostface, you know, lurking around the sh corners because they can't, you know, avoid it because obviously with Sam's past with Billy Loomis's daughter, um, you know, it's inevitable that they're going to keep getting chased. So that's going to happen. We get Gail Whalers back. Um, Courtney Cox comes back and we also get fan favor from part four Kirby so it's cool to see her in the mix and we also get new characters like Durbin Maroney plays NYPD detective we got some more characters um, that are guests so you know we're doing the whodunit right we're trying to figure out who it is remove the mask at the end Scooby-Doo style also what I really enjoyed was the suspense uh, they they amped it up ghost faces chasings and the kills are extremely brutal back to um the the viciousness and the brutality and the bloodshed from like part one ghost face is mean in this one it's and it's and it's very very awesome to see and tradition of uh screen movies where the human body can take so much punishment and you can keep on going right we've seen in other movies right with big action stars they get shot stabbed and they're coming back towards the end but in this one they seem to be almost superhero strength because they're they're still hanging in there. You wouldn't even tell. Like, at least in part one, they, you know, Sydney, when she gets beat up, she's kind of limping and a little hurt, same as all the other characters. But, you know, they follow that same tradition. You know, he gets stabbed and you can still keep going, which I, I, uh, it's just kind of funny at this point. How many times can you say a part six is, is really, is really good in any other franchise, right? I mean, to, to think that we're in part six, it's crazy. Really enjoyed it. I love the Easter eggs. Um, uh, Cat Mojo Jojo's Halloween costume in the background, which obviously Roger L. Jackson does the voice for. So that's really that was really neat to see. Also, the music. I dug the music. Of course, you're gonna have Nick Cave Red Right Hand in there. But what I also enjoyed was um, uh, there was a song by Denzel Curry called "Walking." It's my son's favorite rapper, and they, they, when that song played, oh my god, my son freaked out. It was rad to see. And also heard Cat Blow Lucini in the party scene. Old hip hop heads know that song. It's really cool. Um, oh, the one liners can't forget the liners. Oh, the one of the open uh, coach face says in the beginning is oh, it's so good. And then towards the end, the the girls get to get some really cool um, one liners too, which was really rad. I dug that. And then pretty much, I mean, I, I really enjoyed the whole movie. It was like two hours long. You know, the running time is pretty long, but didn't really even notice it. Didn't, it I mean, like, I love these characters. I love, you know, I love the uh, friendship they have. And I want to see them, you know, succeed and keep going. So that's important. You got to have the characters. You got to really like the characters. If you don't like the characters, the movie's not going to work. So, whew. Trying to catch my breath. Okay, got a minute left. All right, so yeah, if you guys, please, if you guys seen it, let me know in the comments what you guys think about it. Are you guys excited for part seven? Because I'm pretty sure it's already been greenlit. It's already been like six, seven million dollars this weekend. So I'm pretty sure they're going to make another one. But yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I love Ghostface. I love Scream franchise. I love the fan of part fan. one. Saw back in the theater with like three other people in the theater and nobody was there. And it was like, and then who knew? What it's become this gigantic uh, um, freaking franchise so it's awesome and yeah so i guess if you guys like this video please hit the like subscribe button tell me what you guys thought about scream 6 if you liked it if you didn't like it just and as always guys you know it can't rain all the time simple formula everybody's a suspect